In this video, we get started with Azure Bicep. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Bicep is Azure's new domain-specific language, or DSL, used to create and deploy resources in Azure. It's a simplified alternative to ARM templates. Bicep addresses a common complaint about the complexity of authoring ARM templates. JSON formatting can be error-prone and difficult to get started with, especially if the person getting started doesn't have a programming background. I personally don't mind working with JSON templates, but I dedicated a lot of time to figuring them out and still run into formatting issues from time to time. I'm excited about Bicep because authoring templates is so much easier. In this video, we're going to get started with Bicep by preparing the development environment and creating a simple Bicep template. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Also, if you're interested in Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop on Udemy.com. Azure already provides a way of writing and deploying resources with ARM templates. Bicep does not replace ARM templates. If you have a collection of ARM templates, they'll continue to work. Matter of fact, ARM templates are still used in Bicep. They just work behind the scenes. A Bicep file can be converted to ARM templates, and templates can be converted to Bicep files but that's not required to deploy a BICEP file. In this video, we're going to add the prerequisites required to create a BICEP file and deploy resources in Azure. Then we'll create a simple storage account and test functionality. There are three items needed to get started with Azure BICEP. The BICEP extension for VS Code. We could create BICEP files with any editor, but VS Code with the BICEP extension has autocomplete and built-in validation. We also need the BICEP CLI. This is used to compile BICEP files to ARM templates and decompile ARM templates to BICEP files. A BICEP file does not have to be compiled to an ARM template to use it, as you'll see coming up. And finally, we need the Azure CLI version 2.20.0 or the PowerShell Azure module 5.6 or newer. Let's get started with installing the components for our development environment and then creating a storage account. Let's get started in VS Code by installing the extension. Go to Extensions and search for Bicep. And click Install. It's that easy. Let's move on to installing the Bicep command line interface. There are a lot of installers available for Linux, Mac, or Windows. I'll leave the link to this page below. For this example, we'll download and install the Windows version. Download the installer, or use one of the other methods available, whatever you prefer. And let's run the installer. I'll accept the agreement. We can leave the install directory as default, and install. That does it. Let's go back to VS Code. Let's verify the version by typing BICEP. dash dash version. That looks good. And you do need to close and restart VS Code for it to load the Bicep CLI. Next, let's install the Azure CLI, which is different from the Bicep CLI. I prefer PowerShell, but I know some people prefer the CLI instead. So we'll try both. We'll get the current release. And once that's done downloading, we'll install it. Accept the terms and install. There it finished. Let's go back to VS Code. Next, we have to either install or upgrade the PowerShell AZ module. This requires the PowerShell AZ module 5.6 or above. Let's start by getting the current installed modules. This is new, so there's none. Next, let's verify the version of PowerShell. PowerShell 7 is recommended for Bicep. We'll use the psversion-table.psversion command. And here we have PowerShell 7. Since this doesn't have the AZ module, we can use the install module command to add the AZ module.
We'll pass in name AZ. The scope is current user. We'll use the PS gallery repository. And add force. This will take a minute to finish. I did run into a problem on another computer where I wasn't able to upgrade or remove the older AZ module. I'll leave a link in the comments to some troubleshooting steps, but basically I had to install the new AZ 5.6 module next to the older one. After that, it used the newer module and everything worked fine. We'll give this a couple minutes to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. That finished, let's verify the version of the AZ module. I'll use get installed module and pass in AZ. 5.9, so that meets the requirements of 5.6 or higher. Now that we have the BICEP extension, the BICEP CLI, the Azure CLI, and the latest version of the PowerShell AZ module, our development environment is ready. Let's move on to creating a resource with Azure Bicep. We'll start by creating a storage account. Honestly, when I started creating this video, I wanted to do something a little more complex, but quickly reconsidered that. A storage account may be basic, but it's a good starting point for understanding Bicep. Start by creating a new file with a .bicep extension. This one is called storage.bicep. The first thing we'll add is the name and the type of resource. Start by typing resource. And you can use tab to autocomplete because we have the bicep extension in VS Code. Next is the name. This is not the name that will be applied to the resource. This is a symbolic name. As bicep files get larger and more resources are created, we can reference the resource in the file with this name. This one will be called storage. Add a space and we'll get a bunch of resource types. Type storage account. Make sure storage accounts is selected and hit tab. Next we have the API version. The latest non-preview is on the top. Select that one. And again, just hit tab. Notice the red squiggly line, hover over that. It's telling us it expects an equal sign. Let's add an equal sign. Again with the red squiggly line. This time it's telling us it needs curly brackets. Hit space once and select the curly brackets. We need some information to build a storage account. Notice the red squiggly line again under storage. That will tell us what we need. At a minimum, we need the name, SKU, kind, and location. Let's add those next. Start with name. And again, use tab to autocomplete. That will add the colon after name. Now we need to add the actual name. This will be the name of the resource in Azure. We'll do space, single quotes, and type in a name. Remember, a storage account has to be globally unique. In this example, I'll add some random digits to the end. Let's go to the next line and add SKU. Notice this time it's expecting an array. The SKU is a name value pair. Let's add another set of curly brackets. Add name. More specifically, this is the SKU name. Click space and select the SKU. Standard LRS for this example. We'll go down to the end of SKU and go to the next line. From here, we'll add kind. This kind will be storage V2. Go to the next line and this time we'll add a location. Central US for this example. 
That's the minimum required to create a storage account. Notice the red squiggly line under the symbolic name storage is gone now. Click save once finished. And let's move on to deploying with PowerShell next. Verify you're logged into the subscription and create a new resource group with the new AZ resource group command. This one we'll call bicep test RG. And the location will be central US. That looks good. Verify your cursor is in the correct location or you'll have to use a path to the bicep file we just created in the next step. Deploy the storage account using the new AZ resource group deployment command. Give it a name. We'll just call this test. Specify the resource group we just created. Add a template file. For the template file, specify the bicep file we just created, storage.bicep for this example. Once that's added, run the deployment. This will take a minute to finish. Pause here and come back once it's done. It looks like it finished. Let's run the get AZ storage account next to verify the new storage account. We'll give it the name of the resource group we just created. There it is. Let's do the same, but with the command line interface next. Start by changing the name of the storage account. Storage accounts have to be globally unique. We can't add the same one twice. I'll just update the last digit to a two and be sure to save. Make sure you're logged in and run AZ deployment group create passing in the resource group name. And to add the parameter template file. and pass in the name of the file we just updated. Run the command to create the new storage account. Again, this will take a minute to finish. Pause here and come back once it's done. That finished. Let's get the name of our storage accounts next. Use the AZ storage account list command. We'll pass in the resource group bicep test RG. And we'll query on the value of dot name. There they are, those are the two storage accounts. That is the very basics of creating and deploying a bicep file. That is the very basics of creating and deploying a bicep template file to Azure. I hope you found this information helpful. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.